I want to talk to you a few minutes today on the subject against all odds. I believe that as you read the scripture throughout the Bible, we find that God shows up and helps those that seemingly are underdogs. God shows up and helps somebody when all odds are against them. As a matter of fact, when I was in college, I took a class called statistics. And probability and statistics are useful tools. I'm sure they have their place. It didn't help me much, and I didn't do so well in that class. But I'm sure that they, they have their place, but not in faith. Because when you start measuring the probability and statistics and the chances of things happening, happening when things are not going good for us sometimes, the, the real, re, the real um, natural response is hopelessness. It's looking at the result, or the, it is the result of looking at something when the odds are against you, when they're stacked against you. And uh, if you were to be a betting person, there are a lot of times that Nobody would bet on you because the odds are stacked against you so great. But I want us to look at some examples in the scripture of those that, that faced great odds, but they still won. God still showed up. God helped them. And all of us here today could talk about situations and challenges that we've had. Uh, we don't have time today to talk about the difficulties that all of us have gone through. But I want to give you just a few examples. But before I do, I want you to stop the negative confession. I want you to stop saying things like, it's impossible. It will never happen. I've tried that, and it didn't work. And we've already tried it over and over, and the odds are against us. Don't say those things. Because the Bible says in Job 22, declare a thing that it might be established for you. So when you say it's impossible, you are fulfilling Job 22. You are declaring a thing that it will be established, but you're declaring that it's impossible and it won't happen. So we need to declare things will happen. We need to declare that our children are blessed and highly favored. Instead of talking about the terrible twos, we talk about the tremendous twos that Josiah is experiencing right now. <laughs> and I apologize to you if you walk up to him so loving and tender and you've been praying for the family and you walk up and he screams in your face, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's learning to exercise his vocal cords. This is part of the tremendous twos. You understand. But stop the negative confession and declare things on the positive side. If the odds are against you, that's okay because God specializes in the impossible. God is the one that defies all odds. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It doesn't matter what the circumstances and the situations are. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't because God is the God of the impossible. He is the God of the miraculous. He is the God of the supernatural. He is the God that not only can do anything, he will do anything just to show that he can. So if the odds are against you, know that God specializes in the impossible. Here's the fact. The odds can be against you. And a lot of times they are. And here's some situations, just a few examples. Finding the right job in a tough economy that pays good money, that has some benefits. That can be a very tough thing. Getting admitted to college when your grades are bad, when you're not a good test taker. I'm not a good test taker. I know a lot of information, but they never seem to put the right questions on the test. They ask me things that I don't know instead of all the things that I know. Conceiving a child, if you've been told you will never have a child. Adopting a child. Trying to sell a home in an economy that's very tough and the market has crashed and you owe more than the house is worth, that's a tough situation. And we could go on and on talking about difficult times. Recalling info on that crucial exam, I've already talked about that. Um, seeing the salvation of somebody in your family or a friend that everybody else has given up on everybody said 
he will never be saved she will never be saved do you know what they've done do you know where they've been do you know their life story and some people have given up miraculous healing when there's been a terminal report when the doctors already said there's no hope you're gonna die those are not good circumstances when you need a financial miracle when you're facing bankruptcy breaking an addictive cycle when you've tried and you've done everything and you've been to the rehabs and you've tried this and you've tried that and nothing seems to work when you're facing a lawsuit and you get the worst judge that puts everybody in jail that sends everybody to prison when you're going forward or you need to go forward after a crisis after a life crisis these are challenges that we've all faced and if we had time today we could go through this room and I'm sure we could discover many many more circumstances and situations that were ch tough or challenging or difficult that the odds were stacked against us and there seemed to be no way so let's talk about what we do you focus the odds are against you there are going to be odds against you when it comes to situations that you've already uh, gone through and things that you're going to face in the future but you have to focus on who God is on his word and if you'll do that you'll find out that you can beat the odds I want to give you some examples from the Bible of some folks that have beat the odds that they won in spite of the odds that were stacked against them one of my favorite is the story of David and Goliath you know the story of David and Goliath Goliath was the giant that had been against Israel for a number of uh, days he had shouted insults against the armies of Israel every day he came out in the valley and said send your best man out I will fight against him send him out here now and they were afraid they were terrified nobody would go and then David comes along he's a boy he's just a young kid and he's taking lunch to his brothers that are in the battle and he goes down to the battle and he hears this giant shouting these insults and he said who is this that's shouting all these insults against our God and against our army somebody needs to go I'll go fight him and that was not a smart thing in the natural he was a kid he was a boy and Saul says okay if you're gonna go you're gonna wear my armor and he puts all this armor on him and it was bulky and heavy and it didn't fit and he not tested and tried it and he tried to walk and he couldn't even walk and finally he said I don't need this all I need is five smooth stones and you know the story he went to the brook and he gathered five smooth stones and hopefully you know why he got five smooth stones not because he thought he needed five shots because he knew that Goliath had four brothers and uncles that were giants and if he fought against Goliath and killed him there would be four more giants coming against him how many know that there's times in our life when we fight a giant and we think we're gonna win and we we win one battle and the next thing here comes second and third and fourth and fifth and the battles and the giants keep coming but he had five stones one for every giant that he was going to face you know the story he went and stood before the giant the giant ridiculed him and said what are you doing coming against me you're a boy you're a kid and he said yeah but I come against you in the name of God the name of Jehovah and he took the stone and he took the sling and he threw it and he hit the giant right in the head and the giant went down and he ran to the giant and pulled out his own the giant's own sword and cut off Goliath's head what a victory against all odds nobody that was a betting person would have put odds on David it was all on the giant and then we could talk about Gideon Gideon had a large army of 32,000 but it was a small army in in respect to the 135,000 that he was going to face but God said you've got too many Gideon may not have thought that with 32,000 and gonna face 135,000 but he told everybody that was fearful and afraid to go home and 10,000 left and there were 22,000 he kept whittling them down till he finally got down to 300 he had 32,000 now he has 300 and the 300 went against the 135,000 and God used them to defeat the enemy the Midianites with 300 soldiers and then in 1st Kings 17 the widow gave her last meal what she thought was her last meal in the midst of a famine in the midst of a drought she gave her last meal in obedience to God and God multiplied it and sustained her throughout the famine and throughout the drought because she was obedient it was against all odds she was going to eat her last meal and die the Bible said 
but she lived with abundance throughout the time. And then we, t- we could talk about Abraham. They had 318 household servants, and he took on four kings and all of their armies and defeated them because God was on his side. It was against all odds. And then Ruth that went out and gleaned in the field because she was in such poverty. She was a widow. She had nothing to eat. But she later, because of her obedience and the process of God's anointing on her life, she married Boaz. And then Esther, a poor orphan girl who became what we could say would be the first Miss Universe. Beautiful, anointed by God, who was brought to the kingdom, the Bible says, for such a time as this. Who would have thought that it would have been her? She became queen against all odds. And then Sarah and Rachel and Hannah and Elizabeth, who were told, you'll never have a child, you're barren. But God anointed them, and against all odds, they all gave birth to a child. Then the little boy with five, with a small lunch that fed 5,000 men, plus the women and children, 15 to 20,000 people, just with a little lunch. Any one of these we could talk about. You could look at the situation and the circumstances. In all of them, we would say it will never happen in the natural. But God. But God. See, it's through faith you can beat all odds. Now, everybody in this room has challenges we've all had situations that we had to face life happens to everybody in Ecclesiastes 9 11 it says I also saw other things in this life that were not fair anybody been up against some things that weren't fair you've been treated wrong come on the fastest runner does not always win the race the strongest soldier does not always win the battle Wise people don't always get the food. Smart people don't always get the wealth. Educated people don't always get the praise they deserve. And bad things can happen to anyone. We've all been there. Everybody in this room, you have faced times and challenges and situations that put you at a disadvantage. And the odds were against you to win, to even survive, much less win. We've all been there, right? Am I talking to the right crowd? So life happens to everybody. So what do we do when all the odds are against us? Here's the steps. Here's what we do. Number one, trust God regardless. Trust him regardless. Proverbs 16, 9, people can plan what they want to do, but it is the Lord who guides their steps. God is guiding your steps, and if you'll trust him, he will guide you and lead you step by step through every trial, through every challenge, through every frustrating moment, through any situation where the odds are against you, God is on your side, and he will lead you through the challenge. So trust him regardless. There we go. Number two, be filled with the Spirit. Zechariah 4, 6 says, Your help will not come from your own strength and power. No, your help will come from my Spirit, says the Lord. You can be strong. You can have a lot of ability. But your strength, your victory comes from the Lord. And if you will trust Him and be filled with His Spirit, just ask Him, Lord, fill me with your Spirit. I want all you have for me. And He will baptize you fresh with Spirit, with His anointing to help you get through any storm, through any challenge that you face. Amen? And then exercise your faith. In Matthew 17, I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, You could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move because nothing would be impossible. So I say to you, exercise your faith. You have been given mustard seed faith. You have been given faith. You only need faith the size of a mustard seed. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So when you hear the word of God, your faith begins to rise. When you hang around faith people, and you hear testimonies and stories of what God is doing in them, and you see how they operate. Faith will rise in you. Exercise your faith regardless of the odds, regardless of the circumstances, and you will be amazed at what God will do. And then appreciate his favor. Leviticus 26. Five of you will chase a hundred. 
A hundred of you will chase 10,000. All of your enemies will fall. I will look favorably upon you. I will fulfill my covenant with you. You will have such a surplus that you will need to make room for the new harvest. That is the promise of God to you. Those are the promises and the blessings that are available to us as his children. Appreciate his favor. Expect his favor. Know that God's favor is available to you. I come from a family of faith. Rita and I both were raised in a family that we saw the blessings and the miracles of God against all odds. Crazy things. Her grandmother prayed for a washing machine to work because she didn't have the money for it to be fixed. And guess what? It worked. She was in a youth group when they were coming back from Six Flags one night. It was late on a, I don't know what night it was, but it was late at night and they were driving back into Anderson, South Carolina. They had about a 120 mile drive. And as they started to leave Atlanta, the radiator and the radiator hose bust and there was no water and there was no repair place. There was nothing for them to do. So they went and got some water and they put it in it and they prayed and it lasted for a hundred miles until they pulled into the parking lot of the church and as they rolled in the parking lot all the water spilled out of it but God took care of them those kids that night late at night until they got home safely you say oh that was just a coincidence believe that if you want to but I choose to believe that God supernaturally did something against all odds to take care of some kids and to show them how powerful he was God is a powerful God. And sometimes he does it just to show that he can. Appreciate his favor. Matthew 19, verse 26. Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, you're right. It is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Everything is possible. So it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how difficult it might be. It doesn't matter what the circumstances say or what culture says or what the natural says. With God, nothing is impossible. All things are possible if you will only believe. And I choose to believe. If you believe, all things are possible. And as I said, I come from a faith family. And we've had to rely on miracles it was not something that we just saw every now and then but we've had to rely on God believe God and trust God for miracle after miracle after miracle in the face of all odds against all odds we've had to trust him and when you trust him and when you believe if you'll do what I've just told you trust him exercise your faith and then live like nothing is impossible you'll be amazed at what God will do I know that there's some folks here today just because of the sheer numbers of people that are here statistically here's an opportunity where I can use statistics statistically some of you are facing some difficult situations and when you look at the odds it's stacked against you when you look at the situation, there's no way out. You need a miracle. You need a breakthrough. You need a turnaround. So here's what I want to do. I want to take a moment right now, and if you need a breakthrough, if you need a miracle, if odds are all stacked against you, I want to pray for you right now. I want you to get up. I want you to run down here right now quickly. Come on, quickly. We're going to pray right now against all odds that God will supernaturally intervene in your situation, in your circumstances that you will get the miracle that you need, that you will get the breakthrough that you need, whether it's physical or financial or family or relational or legal or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever the situation, God is able to turn everything around. He can bring resolve. He can give you an idea. He can give you creativity. He can turn it around when, when there was no way, when everybody says, it's hopeless. God can turn it around. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray right now. And as I begin to pray for you, those of you that have come, I want you just to declare, here's my situation. God, it's in your hands. I'm trusting you for a miracle. Do it right now. Tell him what it is and then begin to praise him. Father, in Jesus' name, 
You see every person that has come. You see every situation. You see every storm, every challenge, every adverse circumstance. But Lord, you are the God of miracles. You are the God of supernatural. Against all odds, I believe and trust you right now to turn these situations around. In the name of Jesus, for every person here, turn them around. Turn it around. In the name of Jesus, we break assignments. We declare healing and miracles and victory and financial resources. We declare it in Jesus' name. We declare it in Jesus' name. We believe it and receive it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do it, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do it, Father. In Jesus' name. We break assignments. Father, we join our faith in agreement right now for breakthroughs, for miracles, for healings, for turnaround. In Jesus' name. Do it, Lord. Do it right now. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are a supernatural God. I've seen you do it over and over. We ask you now for miracles. We ask you for healings. We ask you for breakthrough. We ask you to intervene and do what we can't do, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do it now, God. Thank you, mighty God. You are a healer. You are a miracle worker. Bless families, bless homes, bless finances. Do it, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're trusting you, Lord. We're trusting you, Lord. We're trusting you right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to praise him now. Come on, everybody. Begin to praise him. Begin to thank him. Begin to bless him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands and bless him now. Thank him. Thank him right now. Praise him right now. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We bless you. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Against all odds, we praise you as the miracle worker. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We bless you, God. He is able. yes he is father we praise you now we receive in faith the answer to every prayer that's lifted to you right now in this room and those watching by internet lord we believe that you are a supernatural a supernatural god to turn things around when all the odds are against us so father we praise you we bless you and we give you thanks in jesus name in jesus name Amen and amen. Lift your hand and just thank him one more time. Just praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody sing, he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's able. He's able. Against all odds. Yes. He's still able. God can do it. He's able. He's able. you would be seated for just a moment I could keep you here until midnight tonight telling you stories and testimonies of our family of the miracles the breakthroughs that God has done for us and then I could keep you here until tomorrow telling you stories of the people we have pastored over all of these years the miracles the testimonies the turnarounds that we have seen that God has done I'm here to tell you God is able to do what he says he'll do and not only he's able but he will he is doing miracles amen